So let's start to dig in a little bit deeper here and see exactly what kind of cool stuff we can do with post-processing. So let's have a look at some of these different categories. Um, let's start off with maybe the, the film category that lets us control a few different things. So there's two settings here I want to show you that are pretty interesting. That's the saturation. And if I go ahead and turn on the contrast as well, I can play with the saturation and contrast. Very similar to adjusting the saturation and contrast on an image in Photoshop or some kind of image editing program. So I can increase the saturation past one and really saturate my scene, make it look very colorful, maybe a little bit cartoony. I can also adjust the contrast here and get myself a very contrasty image. And I can combine the two and come up with a completely uh, unique sort of look to, to whatever game it is that I'm working on. So you can see I can increase the contrast, I can play with the saturation, really get some interesting looks. And the cool thing is you can check these on and off so you can see the before and after, before and after, kind of compare the two. Down in scene color we have a lot of different settings that are pretty cool and useful for customizing the look of your game. So I'm going to come in here and kind of zoom in on this little coffee mug here on the table. And I'm going to show you vignetting. And we can change the vignette color, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to check that on. I'm also going to check on the vignette intensity. Because if I change the color, it's not going to make a difference if intensity is enough. Right now it's set to zero, which essentially means it's off. So I'm going to increase that vignette uh, intensity. And you're going to see we get sort of this black vignette around the image. And if you're familiar with film or you work in cinematography, this vignetting will be pretty familiar to you. So I'm going to go to vignette color and I'm going to change the color. And this is pretty cool because we can start to use this for gameplay purposes. So if this looks familiar to you if you play a lot of games, this kind of looks like your screen when you take damage in most first person shooters, right? You get that kind of red ring around the edges of the screen and that shows the player, hey, you're taking damage, zombies biting your neck, you know, go find some help or use a first aid spray or, or whatever. So this could be a pretty cool way of using post effects to give feedback to the player and tie it in with your gameplay. And that's kind of the way that you have to think about these things. So if we expand the extra options down here, we'll have a scene color tint. Basically what this allows you to do is it allows you to do some color correction. And again, if you're familiar with film or uh, special effects and stuff for film or, or anything like that, this is going to be pretty familiar to you. So we come in here and color correct uh, our image or the way that our game looks. So if we want to add or make our game have warm tones, that could be something cool to do. Up here we have fringe intensity. And it's off by default, but if I increase it, what you start to see is this really cool blurring around the edges of the screen. And for some of you, again, some of you familiar with rendering with things like Mental Ray or V-Ray or working in the film industry or have any experience in that, you'll probably recognize this. This is chromatic aberration. And if we go ahead and change, uh, take the fringe saturation and check that on, we can take it down and we don't get any of the splitting of the RGB values around the edges there where the blurring is occurring. But if we increase the fringe saturation, we can get a lot of those colors splitting. And chromatic aberration, for those that don't know, it's a real-life phenomenon that happens with uh, camera lenses. Uh, there's lots of information about chromatic aberration out there. I'm not going to go over that. That's kind of outside the scope of this tutorial. But it's a really neat effect, um, and it adds more realism and makes your game look a lot more cinematic and stuff. Just try to not overdo it too much because uh, too much can be a bad thing. Less is more. So uh, scene color, this area lets you control that sort of thing. Then of course we have the bloom, which I showed you in the previous video. We can take it down, kind of tone things down. But you always want to have a little bit of bloom, especially if you have an outdoor daytime, sort of middle of the day uh, afternoon scene like this one. Works out pretty good. We can also apply dirt masks. And I don't exactly have a dirt mask texture here to show you. But a dirt mask is basically something you can put on the screen and it's great if you're doing a game where the player's wearing some kind of a visor. Say for example, he's some kind of space marine, he's got a visor over his face. You can add a cool dirt mask on there to make it look like there's uh, dirt and stains and stuff on the screen. Again, you don't want to go too crazy with that because uh, less is more. You don't want to obscure the player's sight line. So 
In the next video, we'll go ahead and keep talking about mo more of these post-effect properties that we can play around with. There's a ton of them, and it's a ton of fun to see what you can come up with.